Johnny Dobbin. Earl Foreman, Johnny, out here in Los Angeles. Well, hi, Earl. How's the weather out your way? Oh, are you kidding? It's wonderful. Always is. If I could manage to drag myself away from this desk, from this stream of small claims that are driving me mad. Oh, what kind of claims, Earl? A lot of money lost through armed robberies and holdups. Oh? Mm-hmm. Looks as though the same man is committing them all. You mean there's a pattern to them, huh? Yeah. And I hope you can somehow put a stop to them. So will you come on out here right away? Now, you said armed robberies. Yeah. Anybody been killed? Not yet. No? But only because nobody's trying to fix up to this holdup man. He's apparently a pretty mean customer. Oh, I see. In other words, maybe I can have the honor of being his first victim. That's right. Mm-hmm. No. no, what I mean is, uh, well, I suppose it could be kind of dangerous for you, so, uh, well, that is... No, uh, no, no, no. It's all right, Earl. For you, for the sake of dear old tri-state life and casualty, no right. sacrifice can be too great. Even if it means loss of the thing most dear and precious to me, my life. No, 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 come off that stuff. <laughs> Never mind, Earl. I'll see you in a couple of days. CBS Radio brings you Bob Reddick in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-State Life and Casualty Insurance Company, Los Angeles office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Wayward Killer Cycles matter. Expense account item one, $170.40 plane fare. It was after 7 p.m. Hartford time when Earl called me, and the next good flight I could make was shortly after dawn the next morning. It got me there about 9 a.m. Pacific time. Item two was $6 for a cab to Earl Foreman's office in Westwood. And these store robberies, Johnny, have all taken place in La Modra Beach. La Modra Beach? Yeah, it's one of those new developments that have sprung up like weeds all over this town. Now, you mean it's part of Los Angeles? Yeah, that's right. Just like Westwood here and Brentwood, Hollywood, View Park, Studio City, Sherman Oaks. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, La Modra Beach is a real nice, snooty resort. has a main shopping section nearly a half mile long. Markets, nice little furniture, dress and jewelry stores, car dealers, drug stores, everything. I see. And these robberies have all occurred along that main stem. Now, the robberies, not burglaries. Robberies. Every one of them, Johnny. And there have been seven in a row now. Every one of them has occurred in broad daylight in a regular pattern. Now, wait a minute, Earl. Yeah. Now, haven't the police been able to do anything about them? Oh, they've tried all right, but so far they haven't got the first base. Mm-hmm. Now, let's get to this pattern. Yeah, well, to begin with, it all looks like the work of one man. The store owners who have been robbed all make them about... Five foot ten, ten and a half, around 150 to 55 pounds, dark brown hair, age about 30, and he wears a handkerchief over his face. Well, let's face it, Earl, that description could fit thousands of men. Yeah, I know. Anyhow. Well, anyhow, Johnny, he always pulls his jobs in the mornings when there aren't too many people in the shops and on the streets. And at the precise moment when the owner is all alone. His timing has been almost too good to be true. Almost fantastic. Mm-hmm. And he simply barged in, waving a gun? That's right, an Army 45. He's made the owner clean out not only the cash register, but the safe. Provided it's in a back room that can't be seen from the street. Then he skipped out through the alley that's behind all those stores. And it's all happened so fast. I tell you, Johnny, his timing is just fantastic. And don't any of the store owners have alarm systems? <laughs> Believe me, they've all ordered them. But there hasn't been time to get any of them installed. And these seven robberies have all happened within the past business week. Two of them were in one day. Now, how much money has been taken? Well, not an awful lot, but enough to hurt. You see, they're all uh, kind of exclusive shops, expensive. Except for the little coffee nook that was knocked over yesterday. All oh, within a week? Yeah. Almost before the police had really had a chance to catch up with him. That's right. There may have so few police out there. So maybe he'll knock over a couple more places and then take off for other parts. Or maybe he's through here already. Well, that's why I think you'd better act fast. I mean... If it was somebody who lives there doing it, he'd take his time and pull a job and wait for the heat to die down and plan and pull another. Now, what's the address of that coffee nook? Uh, 421 Harbor Drive. La Modra Beach. Right. You want me to drive you over there? But run along me your car instead. Oh, sure. Sure. Here's the keys. Help yourself. Okay, Earl. I'll check with you later. (laughs) 
Item 3, 470 for a tank full of gas. And I drove to Lamotra Beach. Believe me, it's an exclusive resort, all right. And not only because of the expensive homes around it, all of them in the $50,000 and up class, but I looked at the prices in some of the shop windows along that main drag. One sign on the window of a tailor shop announced that soup prices start at 275 bucks. And most of the buildings are quite colorful. A bar and grill that looks like the bow of a ship. A radio shop with a tower to make it look like a lighthouse and so on. And then at the coffee nook, and that was the name of it, Mrs. Webster's Coffee Nook. He certainly did, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dollar, did you say? Yes, Mr. Mm. Thanks. Certainly did. He took over $135 from me. You know, some of that money I'd put aside to pay my bakery bill. Oh? You see, until they get a bank out here. Oh, boy, certainly you say hurry up and get that bank finished before everybody gets robbed. There isn't a bank around here? Oh, there will be. There'll be three of them. Well, with all that confusion over building codes, well, all the rest of the stores and places got in, the people started coming before they can finish up a single bank. And now, Mr. I Webster... I just wish uh... to have to keep so much money around here all the time, and so does everybody else. Oh, the nearest bank's over in the valley or in Santa Monica or Westwood. But after what happened to me with that robber yesterday morning, well, you should have seen him with that horrible-looking pistol the way he waved it at me. Yes, well, and Mrs. Webster, no, I... The police are doing everything they possibly... Look, look, look. There they go now. There. Yes, I see. And if you ask me, Mr. Dollar, if you ask me, that means there's been another robbery. There, you see? They're stopping at that nice radio and television store, just the other side of Sam the Taylor. And do you see that nice Mr. Marks, the owner? You see him talking to the policeman? Yes. Yes, it looks like you're right, Mrs. Webster. Another of these robberies. <laughs> in front of the radio and television store until the police could poke around and ask the usual questions. And apparently get the same answers they had from all the previous victims of the holdup man. Instead of checking in with them, I waited until they and the usual bunch of sympathizers left the shop and then sauntered in. So I suppose I should be glad they didn't haul away all my stock, too. They? I mean, him, that dirty robber. Two hundred dollars he took from me, all the cash I had. That's too bad. It's the same one as the robbing everybody else around here. Even the police admit it. Only how did he know I was here alone? Answer me that. How did he know that Bertram was out making that installation for Mrs. Govan over on Palm Drive? Huh? I'm sure I don't know. Hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to close up this place, that's what, until they catch him. Or until they get a bank in this town. And so are a lot of other people. You mark my word. And if you'll excuse me, mister, I'm going to close up this place right this... Re- well, I would. Unless you want to buy a radio set or maybe a TV, mister. No, no, thank you. You would have you seen this model. Oh, one of the finest TV sets ever made. Absolutely the newest model, 23-inch picture, high fidelity. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Hey, look, look, look here. Here, step back away from it, huh? Here, here, here. Like this. Like this. You see this little thing I just took off the hook in front of it? No bigger than a package of cigarettes. Oh, so well, maybe king size. Now, Mr. Marks. It's positively the latest type remote control. Well, I'm here to see you. About... So that's the morning dance party you're looking at. It's a good picture, huh? Yes, yes, that's a good, clear picture, all right. But so I'm maybe you looking... like the music a little bit louder. Mr. Marks, Mr. Marks. Uh, uh, so you, uh, you have to walk back to the set and turn it on? <laughs> No, sir. This little remote control unit right here in my hand. So I push a little button like this. Now listen, will you? And you see, up comes the music. And I didn't even have a touch the set. That's wonderful, huh? Can you bring that music down a bit? Well, of course, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's better. Now, Mr. Mark. Now, also, you uh, can change the station. While at the same time, President-elect Kennedy visited his son, John Kennedy. Yeah. You want to hear the news? All you have to do is push this button. No, no, please, Mr. Mark. Just why? Immediately after the first of the year. Now, there's that fit for love, that wonderful serial program every day. And any other program you want, all you do is... Mr. Mark... Well, if you want the dance party no, back no, on... No, please, well, please. I was no. just, just demonstrating, you know, in case you want to buy a nice brand new latest model. No, I don't, I don't. I don't. What I wanted to talk to you about... Look, will you, will you please just stop fooling with that thing for a minute? But I didn't touch it. Not, not that time. 
Oh? Well, it seems well see, that it goes again. Change the stations all by itself. John, absolutely no what do you mean? Is it supposed to do that? No, no. no it's there. Well, now, look here, Marshal. I mean, I today to is the third time that thing has been acted up. Maybe the fourth. Well, you better send it back to the factory. And the last time was only three, four minutes before that holdup man came in here. Oh. Western nation. Going crazy. Now, that holdup is what I came in here to talk about, Mr. Mark. Yeah. Just like I said before. Now, tell me, Mr. Look, will, will you please, can't you turn that thing off? Say, I just thought of something, Mr., uh, Mr., uh, what's the, your name is? Well, I didn't, but it's Johnny Dollar. Well, see, Mr. Dollar? That goes so again. Now, look, I am a special investigator from the insurance company that will have to pay you for whatever loss you suffered as a result. Turning to sports. Oh, will you turn that thing off, please? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Well, there you are. The whole set is off now. But like I started to say... What well, was I started to say? The next to the last time this happened was just uh, before... Mark. Well, just before that poor Mrs. Webster got robbed yesterday what, morning. What I want to know from you is... What, what did you say? I said... I said the remote control system on this fine, this magnificent television set acted the very same way just before I got robbed. Yes, yes. And also just before Mrs. Webster got robbed. Well, now, are you sure of that? Well, maybe. Maybe now that I think of it. Yes, maybe what? Well, maybe it was acting up this way three days ago and Mr. Blenstrom was a novelty shop. Well, he was robbed. Well? Yeah, over $700. Right after the set started acting up? Yeah, right? that's funny. Somehow, he said, this crook seemed to know exactly when the owners were alone in their stores. Yes? Yeah? That his timing was perfect. What's that, Mr. Dollar? Well, oh, that's what Earl Poorman told me. Earl Poorman? And maybe this TV demonstration of yours, this remote control gizmo, explains just how that hold-up man knows when the coast is clear. Well, if I don't understand what you're saying, Mr. Dollar. In other words... <laughs> now, wait, Mr. Dollar. Yes, you have an idea? Yeah, I certainly have. Because if you're from the insurance company, and if you're the one to see, I get paid back for what I lost. Well, should we talk business? Yes, huh? yes, we'll talk business, all right, but not about your insurance. But, Mr. Uh, Dollar... That, that remote control device. Here. Here, now, how, how does this thing work? Hmm? Well, uh, uh, I don't know exactly. It's some kind of wave. Wave? Yes, yeah, sound waves or, or something. Yeah, you know, and it's booklet here that comes with a set. Uh, uh, sound wave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, look, look, look here. Mm -hmm. It says waves of 44.6 kilocycles to 51 kilocycles. Yeah. So high in pitch as to be inaudible to the human ear. If that means you can't hear it. Yes, I know. Go on. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, actuated device within the set itself that changes volume or station channels or turns it off or turns it on. Okay. Okay, I've got it. Yeah? Yes, yes. Don't you see? This hold-up man has a pal. So? Yes, that's it. There is somebody along this main street who can keep tabs on all you store owners, who knows when you're all alone in your shop. Oh, he does. And by radio, he communicates with the man who actually pulls the hold-up. Tells him when the coast is clear. You mean that one of the merchants, that somebody here along this street is telling this hold-up? Yes. It, 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 telling him by radio when it's safe. But yes, he's a that's exactly oh, what I mean. And he doesn't know it. Oh. But his radio signal on a band somewhere between 44 and 51 kilocycles is also working this remote control gadget. So, I told you this is a wonderful and marvelous set. All right, then. If I can get hold of a direction finder, I can track down the guy who's sending out the all-clear information to the hold-up man. You really think so? That is the answer, Mr. Marks. And I think I know where to get hold of a direction finder. Yet of what you say is true, Mr. Dollar. Yes, well? Well, after the way this set was behaving a couple of minutes ago. Right, right. More hold-up information being sent out from that transmitter. Yeah, but then there ought to be another hold-up. Only there isn't. At least there isn't any... any... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Come on. Look, look, and you see the people there in the next block there in front of the market. It's another hold-up. Two in one day again. Yes. And, Mr. Dollar, there'll be more and more and more of them until we're all put out of business. No. No? No, because now, Mr. Mark, we know the answer. Using the phone in the store of Mr. Mark's, I ran up item four. Twenty cents for a call to Bob McKinney in North Hollywood, who was known among radio hands as W6VFG. 
He not only used to handle the engineering end of my broadcast, but believe me, Bob knows his killer cycles like the back of his hand. Sure, it's possible, Johnny. All that a hold-up man needs is a little vest pocket receiver lashed up to get signals on that oddball frequency. And somebody along this street can send an info about when the coast is clear. Right. Okay, then, Bob. If you can bring a direction finder over here, we can track down the transmitter and nab at least one of the teams. Yes, unless this last one was the last one. How soon can you get over here with that equipment? Are you sure the signal's being transmitted within that frequency range? No, it has to be. Then I'll do whatever rewiring is necessary here at home. And uh, how about first thing in the morning? I'll be waiting for you at the Marks Radio and Television Shop here on the main drag. I drove back to West Los Angeles and spent the rest of the day and the night with Earl Foreman and his wife. Then, early the next morning, met Bob at Mr. Mark's shop in La Moga Beach. As Bob finished setting up his radio direction finder... There we are. All set. But Johnny, you still haven't told me how you got the frequency of that signal he's sending out, whoever he is. No, it's easy, Bob, that... TV set out there on the floor. You see him? There against the wall? With the big one? Mm hmm. And there's a remote control. That, um, that little removable box with the buttons on it? Yeah, I know the model. When you push one of these buttons, it sends out a signal in that frequency range that I gave you and makes this set chain station. Mm -hmm. So if the transmitter sending out info to the holdup man also makes the set chain station, no, it must be working in that same frequency. No, Johnny, no. What? I'm sorry, but it doesn't mean a thing. Well, what, what do you mean? That remote control puts out sound waves. Well, I know. Too high in pitch for us to hear them. Not radio waves. Well, what do you mean? You mean that my theory, my whole theory about somebody transmitting information, that you mean it's all wrong? Mm -hmm. Johnny, it's sound that makes the TV set react. So whether somebody's using a radio transmitter on that frequency or not, I couldn't possibly. And yet I suppose the matter of resonating, I mean, a sympathetic resonance. A what? Well, sometimes nearby to a broadcasting transmitter, a pile of bits of metal, something like that, sometimes it'll resonate. While listening to that pile of scrap metal, you can actually hear the broadcast, so. But the transmitter of these signals would have to be practically on top of this TV set. Maybe it is. Huh? Because whoever is tipping this guy off to when the coast is clear, to when some businessman is alone in his store, has to be somewhere right along this main street. Well... Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to see when it's all clear. Well, maybe if it was somebody right next door. Mr. Mark. The Marywell sisters with their nice dress shop? Never, Mr. Dollar, never. And on the other side of this place? My good friend Sam the Taylor. Uh-huh. But on top of this shop of yours, it's uh, built up like a lighthouse. Yeah, for local color here at the beach. Yeah. Like like Tony's bar is like the front of a ship and like that Hawaiian. Yes, yes, but what, what, what is in this lighthouse of yours? Well, just a couple of small apartments I rent. But there's a transmitting antenna on the top of it. Oh, I don't see a transmitter in the shop. Well, I don't have any. All I sell is receiving things like radio. Bob, and Bob, you have got it. One of your boarders, Mr. Marks. Those two boys? Boys? Well, you know, 25, maybe 30 years old. Well, what do they do? Well, that Willard Thorson, he never seems to leave the place. Well, of course he doesn't, because up there in that tower is where he can see everything that goes on down here on the street. The whole length of the street. Johnny, you're right. And the other one, Mr. Marks. Well, I don't know. That, that Harry Williams goes out early every morning and comes back late at night? Well, of course, because he is out waiting to get the word from Thorson up there on the tower. And Johnny, if that transmitter is up in the tower, it's plenty close enough to affect this TV set. Then go on up there, Mr. Dollar, and arrest that Willard, that, that, that Willard Thorson. On what? Unless we catch him broadcasting information to Harry Williams. And even then, pal Harry might get away. All right. So? I have a better idea. Why don't we just sit down here and watch some TV? <laughs> so we did. For three solid days. Until suddenly the set began to change stations unexpectedly. When that happened, Bob turned on his direction finder. And yes, that signal was coming from straight up over our heads. 
And the voice that Mr. Marks identified as Willis Fawson told his pal Harry the coast was clear at Beckham the Jewelers. Yeah, right down the street, Mr. Dollar. Only five doors down the street. So while Bob McKinney went up in the tower to grab Willis Fawson, I hiked on down the back alley to Beckham the Jewelers with my 38 ready for action. And I got there just in time to find Harry Williams about to leave by the back door, loaded with Beckham's dough. You know, I didn't like his look. I didn't like that 45 in his hand either. And he objected to my barring his getaway. He was really kind of nasty about it. But after a while, we kind of reached an understanding. And my, uh... My knuckles are still sore from when he ran into my fist. Yes, so I guess there's nothing like modern electronics as an aid to crime. And as an aid to catching a crook. Two of them in this case. Expense account total, including a trip home. Oh, call it 400 bucks even. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Oh, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a crook, a firebug, unwittingly solves the case for me and hands me a Christmas present to boot. Join us, won't you? Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Reddick, is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zorano, Jr., Heard in our cast, Leon Janney as Mr. Mark, Les Damon as Earl, Bill Sterling as Bob, and Athena Lord as Mrs. Webster.